Welcome to Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast. I'm Kelsey Sorensen, a former elementary teacher and current homeschool mom. And even though I've been a resource creator since 2014, I've realized that printables alone aren't all you need in order to thrive as a teacher or homeschool parent. That's why I also created this show and got certified as a life coach to help you finally kick burnout to the curb and feel confident with whatever challenges come your way. With the right mindset strategies and new teaching inspiration, you're going to be well on your way to your best teacher life. Now, now let's go. Okay, welcome, Leah. I am so excited to have you on Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast today. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I am so excited to be here and to talk with you. Thank you for having me on. Yes, I am thrilled to have you. I saw your presentation at the Life Coach School Mastermind. And for those of you listening, that is kind of like a professional development, but for life coaches, where we really kind of refine our skills in coaching, but also our own personal development. Because just like I tell you about how when you help yourself. That's helping your students, your children. That's what we do as well. We want to make sure that we are regulated, which we'll talk about before we help you. (laughs) So Leah is an expert in the nervous system and she talked all about that at Mastermind. And I was just like, I need to have her on the podcast. So thank you for coming. Well, I'm excited to talk all about the nervous system with you. I can talk all day long about it. So you may have to (laughs) me off sometimes. Oh, well, I just can't wait to hear all of it. And I'm really excited too, because we're having this on the podcast and everything. But then um, my publisher, so I'm writing a book and I know I mentioned this to you too, when I emailed you, they wanted me to interview some other experts and like, you know, put in the book, like who they are and everything. So we'll get to include some of this in there as well. So kind of a little mini preview to that too. (laughs) Okay. So first, before we dive into content and the nervous system and all of that, can you introduce yourself and explain your background and what you do and how you got into all of this? Sure. Absolutely. So my name's Leah Davidson and I am a life coach and I was, um, trained to the life coach school. And that's where you saw me at mastermind. Um, but I am also a speech language pathologist and that's where sort of my journey started. I've been a speech pathologist for 25 years. And, um, I think probably a lot of your audience will be like, Oh, one of my kids did speech pathology for their R's or their S's or something. I was not a school speech pathologist, so I didn't work with kids and I don't work with kids. I work with people who have experienced traumatic brain injuries. And so that's sort of where my introduction to everything brain, neuroplasticity, nervous system started. I My role as a speech pathologist is to work with people on their cognitive communication skills. So that's essentially how cognition and communication come together. So how does your memory and your attention and your executive function skills impact your reading, your writing, your listening, your social skills, and so forth? So part of my role is to help people in their rehabilitation after they've experienced trauma to use different strategies. And at the time, I was working with people and just noticing, gee, it's really hard for people (laughs) to learn new cognitive strategies. And so I started just looking into more tools. How can I broaden my toolbox? And I came across life coaching probably about 10 years ago or so and started really integrating mindset work, eventually became certified with Life Coach School, but that still wasn't enough. And I started going even deeper and developing a greater understanding of the nervous system. And as I was learning about the nervous system, I sort of realized, oh, I've always known about the nervous system. I've always been integrating it. I just didn't know that this is what it was called. I didn't know exactly how it functioned. And I just started using a lot more tools to help people understand their nervous system, become more regulated. And that's where I think I say the magic sort of happened, where there's a crossroad between mindset and nervous system and cognitive skills. And I just broadened my reach, started working with people who had a lot of stress, anxiety, burnout, not necessarily with brain injuries, but just life in general. And so a snowball effect, I ended up developing a training, advanced training in nervous system resilience, where I help people do a deep dive into their nervous system, 
either for themselves personally or if they work with coaches or if they work with their helping professionals, how to do that with their clients. So that's where I'm at now. And I love talking about the nervous system. <laughs> I love hearing like everybody's story and how they came to what they do. And and like you mentioned, it was kind of like this natural, like you learned about it and you're like, wait, I was already doing that. Yes, yes, yeah. And then what I love from what I've seen from you already is you found great ways to like explain it, like, which I love as a teacher, like, you know, you were able to explain it and mastermind, like, and we'll get into kind of some of the Mm -hmm. stuff you shared yeah. there, but I'm just like, oh, like there were things that I had heard before, but the way that you explained it, like, yeah. oh, that, that yeah. clicked a lot more, like in yeah. just that 25 minute presentation that you did. Right. So I love and that. I think, I think that comes from the background of being a speech pathologist and comes from the background of working with the clients that I work with who had experienced injury. So often they had very short attention or difficulty remembering things or language comprehension. And the I, I worked with people who have brain injuries from like three years old to 95 years old. Oh. So it was such a range that... I have to come up with analogies and stories and Mm -hmm. how is this going to be easy for you to remember? How is this going to be easy for you to understand? And when people work with me individually, they're always laughing because I'm constantly thinking like, okay, let's put it this way. Pretend like you're skiing, pretend like you're, which is what teachers do, Uh you know, (laughs) stories and analogies and real world things, because that's how we remember it. And, and that's, That's what I love doing. How can I make this easy for people to integrate into their life, easy to teach their family, their kids, easy for them to remember to use it on a daily basis? Yes, I love that. You do such a good job. Um, before we really dive in, can you explain like what is the nervous system and why should teachers and the homeschool parents who are listening learn about it and how does it right. apply to them? Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people, like we've heard of the nervous system. And we all know we have a nervous system, but everybody's Uh sort of like, oh, what is the nervous system? Essentially, the easiest way I like to explain it is it's how the brain and the body communicate with each other. So the nervous system, it makes up, it's, it's like the pathway of communication. And our nervous system is running behind the scenes everything that we do. And when I'm referring to the nervous system, it is actually more complex and it sort of has, you know, umbrella branches out to umbrella branches out. I'm talking about something called the autonomic nervous system, which is what we're going to be referring to today. And autonomic is what they call it, basically means automatic. So it's happening behind the scenes. And when your nervous system is functioning properly and it's healthy. It's regulating everything you do, your um, digestive, your heartbeat, your breathing, your temperature, all these things. Luckily, we don't have to think about them because imagine if you just, you know, breathe, breathe, breathe. (laughs) Oh, wow. That that would be all you could do. (laughs) That's all you could do. Like, okay, that's the end of my day. I'm just functioning. So we have this amazing system that takes care of everything. But if you think of the things it's in charge of, it's in charge of our survival. And when it is healthy and working, functioning well, we have good, you know, heart support, breast support, digestive, reproduction, all these things work well. But the other job that the nervous system has, because it's responsible for your survival, is to take care of your survival. So it is out there constantly looking for anything that is dangerous to you. So I like to say it's like this giant radar detector or a smoke detector is the example that he used um, in my presentation at Life Coach School. And the smoke detector or this, this radar is basically scanning safety, danger, safety, danger, safety, danger. And based on what it scans, and it's scanning by taking information in from various locations. It's scanning around you. So it's looking at sort of all the senses that you have, what you see, what you hear, what you touch, everything external. And then it takes a check of what's going on inside you. All right, so Leah's heart is beating a little bit faster right now, and her stomach is growling a little bit. She's got a little bit of tension. There must be something going on. And then it's taking in what's happening between you and I. Mm -hmm. Is there a connection there? Is there, am I picking up good vibes, like (laughs) spidey sense? And it takes all these things, and it makes this judgment as to safety or danger. Now, none of this is happening consciously. 
So it's not like you're, you have, again, imagine if you had to constantly, oh, is that safe? Is that dangerous? It just decides for you. And it decides for you by comparing what it's seeing by past experiences, past memories, past imprints is what we, we talk about. And so if it decides that you're safe, it kind of is like, all right, she's safe. She can go off and it assigns you a state, like a physiological state. But if your danger is, get, is what gets assigned, it will assign you another state and it will start trying to protect you. So the nervous system is right behind the scenes. It's communicating back and forth from your brain to your body, taking in all everything that's going around. And the reason it's so important for us to understand is because it is driving everything that we do. When it assigns you safety or danger, I like to say it assigns you a flavor of safety or danger. And that flavor permeates everything else that you do. So if you are assigned danger, your thoughts, your feelings, your actions are all going to be flavored with danger. And so it is important we understand it because not only is it driving what you're doing as a teacher, as a parent, as a partner, it's driving what your kids are doing. And yes. your kids are so much younger, but they are just like, the, their nervous system is being created as we speak. And yours is shaping, continues to shape throughout your life as well. So that's a little bit in a nutshell. I was touching on a whole bunch of things that I kept on thinking, well, I should dive into that or dive into that. So I'll like <laughs> ask some questions. I know. I like, there are so many different directions we could go with this. So one thing that I have, so I feel like one popular thing that people talk about a lot is they say like, oh, I was triggered by like this or whatever. So is that kind that is kind of tied into like the nervous yeah. system, right? Yeah. <laughs> Because basically what happens is, so our nervous system develops when we are in utero. So, and mm -hmm. we, that's why our mother's nervous system is so important to us because we are sort of feeding from that nervous system. Yeah. As we continue to be, you know, a newborn and we have all these experiences and it's not just experiences, there's genetics, there's other things involved, but essentially we have these imprints that, that affect us. So if I am, you know, in high school and somebody um, laughs at me for raising my hand and saying something, that gets imprinted. And then years later, I may be in a situation where somebody laughed at me. And I'll have this like, um, like a visceral reaction, like, why are they laughing at me? What's happening here? And what that is, is it's like my nervous system picked up, scanned, yeah. was like, oh, this is like the time that happened in high school. And this is what we have to do to protect ourselves. So it's not a conscious thing. So when we're triggered, we're not consciously triggered. We right. often don't even identify why we're triggered. We just have this biological reaction and we don't necessarily know why. And it, it just comes on. And then the question is, what do we do after that? That's, that's yeah. where we start introducing choice later on. Yeah, for sure. And so when you were talking about all this, you were talking about like how we scan and then we like maybe think this or whatever. So you and I, we both have gone through the life coach school and we, we know the model. We love the model. Like I love the model so much. I do too. But as I was kind of thinking about where like the nervous system kind of fits in and everything, it was like yeah. our thoughts, they don't just come from nowhere, you know? And that is yeah. where, when you were talking about the imprinting. So what is kind yeah. of your thought on like where exactly, like I've talked about the model a lot on the podcast, but I haven't okay. talked as much about the nervous system and right. where does that fit in? Yeah, because they do fit beautifully. I love the model too. And sometimes when people talk about nervous system stuff, it's almost like they're saying mindset doesn't matter. I'm like, oh my gosh, no, mindset matters a lot. And mm -hmm. mindset is so important. And the model is so important. The There's a couple of challenges when we're dysregulated. First of all, when we are dysregulated, that's what we, we call being triggered. So when you're triggered and you feel activated, we call it dysregulated. When that happens, one of the things that happens to us is our thinking skills go offline. 
And it makes logical sense because if we are in survival mode, we don't need to have like good critical thinking and compassion and curiosity. Like the brain's mm-hmm. like, what? No, we need to survive. Let's <laughs> right. just survive here. So our thinking <laughs> skills go offline. So it, it becomes a challenge when we confront a circumstance, we get triggered. And then what we want to do with the model is we want to help people choose what to think about the circumstance. Well, if you are activated, you don't have your thinking skills. It's very hard for you to choose what you want to think. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to regulate yourself to bring back your thinking skills. So I like to say to people, if we were going to break down the model between circumstance and thought, there's a space (laughs) And it's an invisible space, but in that space lies your nervous system. And so you have the circumstance that which as your brain is, your nervous system is scanning Mm -hmm. safety, danger. If it determines that the circumstance is safe, then you can go ahead and continue using the model because your thinking skills are online. You can continue Mm -hmm. on as you go. If it scans danger then it basically says, sorry, thinking skills, you got to take a hike. And again, this is not choice. This is, yeah. this is biology. This is how it works. You've got to take a hike and I'm going to take over right now, which means you don't have access to your thinking skills. You are going to be responding and reacting. That's why a lot of times people are like, I don't know. I, I didn't think. I just, I just did this because they truly aren't thinking. They can't think. So Mm -hmm. I put the nervous system right in between the circumstance and the thought. And if we can get regulated, then the model works beautifully. If we can't get regulated, then all that means is we have a couple extra steps that we need to take to regulate ourselves, bring our thinking skills. I call it our CEO, bring our CEO back online. Once the CEO, once we're regulated, the CEO, now the CEO can sit down and say, okay. Now, how do we want to think about this? What do we want to do? So that's how I marry the two. And I think they they do go beautifully together. I I think so too. And you had like that flow chart that you shared Mm -hmm. that was just like perfect. Like, am I safe? Go to the model. Have I not? Then, you know, we need to regulate. regulate. Yeah. Yeah. Then you got to regulate yourself. And it's not a big deal. And, and I think it's, It's a helpful way to look at things because I know that a lot of my clients that I work with will beat themselves up if they feel that, well, I don't even know what I'm thinking, or I just like the feelings come out of nowhere, or I'm trying to change the thought. I want to change the thought, but I keep coming round back Mm -hmm. to it. And so they start to think either the model doesn't work or they have some type of weakness. I'm just not smart enough. I'm not, I guess I'm so broken. I'm not able to do it. And when we introduce the nervous system, it's just like, hey, no, nothing's gone wrong. This is just your nervous system. And you just need to learn how to befriend it, how to work with it. And then your thinking skills will come back. We'll still all have challenges because we all do. But for so many of my clients, it's such a relief to know oh, there is a nervous system to consider. And sometimes she is the one that is taking over. (laughs) Yeah. And and to just understand that that's okay. There's nothing wrong with you, you know? Well, in fact, that is biologically what is supposed to happen. You are perfectly right on track. The only thing we don't know is that we aren't completely aware of what imprints we have had throughout our life. Yeah. And that's where trauma comes in, that many times people have had experiences at a young age where they were not capable, they did not have the resources to respond, and so they get stuck in a dysregulated state, or they they do things to adapt but they're not helpful things down the road, you know, things like people-pleasing. When you're a little kid, if you have an experience where you like brilliantly think, oh, if I just please mom, then this Mm -hmm. is what happens. It's brilliant when you're little. But as you continue growing up and all of a sudden you're pleasing like every single person around you and it's, it's really a response that you have automatically, you never consider your own self. 
it can become problematic. But really, it was just an adaptation. It was a response that you had. And it was a nervous system response. And so you can yeah. learn how to unlearn it. And you're not broken and you're not weak. And, you know, there's no moral failing. It's just like that's how your nervous system adapted and coped. And we thank it. Yeah. But we do something different now. So how do we do that? How do we get to know our nervous system and befriend it? And then, you know, do what you were just saying, like make the change or whatever. Well, the first thing is awareness that you have a nervous system. (laughs) And and that, that really truly is, is the first thing. Um, So the way I like to explain the nervous system is when we talk about safety and danger, I label it like you're on certain teams. If your nervous system senses safety, it sends you to sort of a a home base. I call it team resilient because it's in that space where you can use your thinking skills. You're connected with people. You can be curious, have compassion and patience and intuition. All those good things happen when you're regulated. When your nervous system senses danger, the first line of of defense that it's going to go to is it's going to start to get you activated. So you can start to feel activated. Now, for many people, they may define it as like, oh, I start to stress out. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, my heart starts pumping. Maybe I get a little flush, a little sweaty. I have to go to the bathroom. Some people feel a lot of tension. I feel the anxiety rising. And what that is, is you're entering into a state of hyper arousal because your nervous system thinks I'm in danger. And of course, what am I going to do if I'm going to be in danger? There's two options. I'm going to try to fight the danger or I'm going to try to get the heck out of there. I'm going to try to flee the danger. And both mm-hmm. that fight or flight, it's an energy of activation. So I call it you're on team hyper. When you're on team hyper, you feel the energy. There's an excess amount of energy. So that's how you can know that you're dysregulated is you start to feel this extra energy, yeah. this panicky. There's a little bit flavored with danger, like, and it just could be slightly nuanced, but you just feel like, ah, oh, sometimes you may want to <laughs> scream, you're getting irritated, maybe you're super defensive, maybe you're very conflictual. These are all signs that you are dysregulated and you're on team hyper. That's the first place you go. Now, if your nervous system senses that, oh my gosh, not only you're in danger, you are in extreme life threat. Or if you've spent so much time in danger, essentially your nervous system is like, listen, I'm exhausted. I've been fighting and fleeing for so long and nothing is happening. We have to conserve energy or we're going to die. So it's one of those things. Either right away it's like you're going to die or you're so activated. And what it will do is it will drop you down into a state of conservation. It's still a protective state. It's trying to look out for you, but it is a state where there's more of a hypo arousal, meaning that things are slower. There's this flavor of helpless and hopeless and sadness, and I call it team hypo. So your nervous system dysregulation can start to feel like that slowness, that exhaustion, that's where burnout lives. When people feel like I am so burnt out, I'm exhausted, I can't do these things, you're in dysregulation as well. So I always work with people to the first thing we want to do is we want to get a picture of what's it like being you? Like, do you notice, do you get easily activated? Do Mm -hmm. you sometimes feel at the end of the day that you're completely shut down? And again, there's nothing wrong with you. This is just the way your nervous system responds. And you will always go up and down. It's not the goal of a healthy nervous system is not to always stay in that team resilient, that home. The goal of a healthy nervous system is to respond appropriately, depending on what is put in front. Like if there is some danger, I need to be active. Yeah. I need to. If I am grieving over something, I need to come down and be in more of a collapse state, a shutdown yeah. state. So we want to be able to move easily up and down. But we first have to, you know, just learn and accept where do I tend to go? I talk about it in yeah. terms of 
like if my home state is where I want to be in team resilient, where's my second home? Like where's my vacation? Yeah. <laughs> Some people, my vacation. Like, a I team know, hyper. <laughs> I'm a team hyper. My vacation yeah. property. It doesn't mean I've never visited team hypo, but sure. it means that that I naturally will go to team hyper. And I have little like things that as I have learned about myself and watched, there's little things that give me indicators that I'm going there. So for example, when I start to get a little bit sarcastic. I'm like, oh, I'm heading. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not full out irritated. I've just got that sarcasm. I'm like, okay, I'm sort of like in that yellow light stage where I'm about yeah. to hit red. And so you just start learning that. Okay, Leah, you're you need to do something to take a break. You need to look at what what can I do to calm myself down? What can I do to feel a little bit better? And uh, to step away and do those things. So that's the first step is getting to know what you're your landscape is, is what I call it. Um, The next thing that I just want to also mention is that that middle zone of safety, where I call it the team resilient, that zone will change its size. Mm. And for some people, they have a very, very wide size, like it's, it's, it's big. And which is good, which means that they're able to sort of tolerate a lot of ups and downs in life and not really get very frazzled. That you'll see some people like, they're just like, "Eh, you know, like I can take it or leave it. And or sometimes they will just handle something in a way that you're like, well, they handled that. And they seem to be able to still keep their thinking skills online. And that is often because they sort of have a very wide zone of resilience. But other people, their zone is much, much more narrow. And so then something small can happen and it will just completely tip them yeah. over the edge. Now, the size of our zone is dependent on a ton of different things. There's personality factors, there's genetics, but more importantly, there's like our exposure to trauma from our past or from our present. There's different adversities. There's relationship challenges. There's just everyday fatigue. All these things will change what the size is of our zone of resilience, which means if we, you know, have experienced a lot of trauma, if we have some chronic illness, so we're in a lot of pain, if maybe we haven't slept for ages because we've been (laughs) up with a sick child, Our zone is going to be very small, which means it's not going to take much before we get tipped into team hyper or team hypo. And again, this is normal. Like our zones will change. But for some people, they've been stuck for a long time with a very narrow zone. And so the goal is we need to work with them to help them widen that space, widen their tolerance, widen that zone so that they don't so quickly tip into dysregulation. Yeah. So how do we do that? Like if we're like, okay, I think I want to widen my zone. What do we do? Yeah. So a lot of people, the first thing is they'll say, okay, I've identified that I've been living in team hyper. That's a, that's a really (laughs) common thing for people to say, I'm not even sure I've ever been in the the home place. I think I've been in (laughs) hyper. And so they quickly want to know how do I get from hyper to get home? Or how do I go from hypo to come back up? And I just give the analogy that, well, think of it like you're moving You've decided you want to move. You no longer want to live in your vacation home in Team Hyper. So you pack up all your boxes. You pack up everything. You call the movers. They come. They load everything up. And then they say to you, okay, where do you want us to deliver this stuff to? And you're like, oh, I have no idea. I just know I want to leave here. And that's what a lot of people are saying. Well, like, tell me what to do, how to get out of this situation. Well, the first thing is you have to create a home. You have to create that home space. You have to have that address. And it's not as hard as you think it is. It just requires like small little changes. We start with doing things like what will allow you to feel safe and to reduce things like stress levels. And it comes down to some basic pillars. Like we look at What's your sleep like? 
What's your Mm. nutrition like? What's your movement like? What are your relationships? And do you get enough sunlight? Those are sort of the five key pillars that we always start with that. Those are the fundamentals. You aren't going to be able to build a home if you're not sleeping, if you're not eating properly, (laughs) if you're not exercising, and within reason, because I know a lot of your listeners, you know, are your parents. And generally, you know, we spend, what, how many decades not sleeping? My kids are young adults, and I have to tell you, right? I <laughs> wake up because now I'm waking up about different things. I'm not going to take care of kids during the night, but I'm still waking up. So it's within reason. We want to get a good amount of sleep. Movement is crucial. Movement is something that we need to be doing on a daily basis to help reduce the stress levels because we know that stress will shrink our zone. So how do we Mm -hmm. widen our zone? We need to get rid of stress. And one of the best ways to do that is to making sure that we're getting that movement. Connecting with people, having people that we have relationships with, that includes a relationship with ourself, a relationship with a higher power, a relationship with other people, a relationship with the world around us. And that's where we start looking at self-care and we look at, um, you know, connecting with nature. We look at having opportunities for, you know, higher power, higher purpose. Maybe it's going to come in the form of worship or prayer. These are all things that will help widen our zone. And then, you know, nutrition. Are we taking care of hydration, getting as much um, nutrition as, as we can, there's lots of discussion as to, you know, is it this diet or that diet? Mm-hmm. We just want to make sure that we're fueling ourselves and that we have enough fuel to carry us throughout the day. When we have those basics, then we can get more specific. And one of the best ways to help us is to start focusing on our breath. Because our breath is a very quick way that we can move through all the different zones, team Mm -hmm. resilient, hyper, team hypo. So there's different breath exercises that you can do. If you're in team resilient, you are going to want to become sort of more conscious of your breathing. You're going to want to make sure that you're slowing your breathing down. We tend to over breathe. So just working on, you know, doing simple things like box breathing, breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, hold for four. We're just going to be doing things that will help us create um, feelings of safety just by breathing and keeping ourselves grounded, grounding exercises, things like that. And then, of course, if we're, say, on Team Hyper, we're going to want to um, bring our breathing down, regulate, and we mm-hmm. do that by focusing on exhalation. But if we're on team hypo, we may want to upregulate. So we will focus on inhalation. So there's different things we can do with our breath. Our breath is something that our nervous system takes care of, but it's also the only function that we have that we can also deliberately take care of. Oh, yeah. So taking care of our breath and learning about breathing is one of the best things that we can do to help us with our nervous system. And then there's a ton of other things, but that sort of gives you a sample. As I said, it's not a great starting point. Yeah. (laughs) And it's not like looking at it like, oh, wow, those are things I've never heard of. Sometimes we just need to know that we're on the right track and this is the why behind it. You know, I don't want to just do movement because I know it's good for my body. It's good for calorie burning. I want to do it because it's good for my nervous system. Yeah. That's why I want to do it as well. Yeah. And most people probably don't know that. Like they don't know the connection between like exercise or just even movement, as you say. Like it can just be going for a walk or, you know, playing with your kids or like, you know. Well, Can't play think, is another you know, one. Yeah. Yeah. Play, I just, we just were, talked, we had a whole session in my training all about play. And so the assignment that everybody has to go out is to go out and find ways to play. Play can be really hard for a lot of people. If they've mm-hmm. spent a good portion in their life um, in a dysregulated state, dysregulation is not somewhere where we do a lot of play. 
But if you can engage in more play, whether it be with your kids or on your own, that is something else that you can do to widen your zone of resilience, to create that home, create safety. Because your nervous system is like, well, if she's playing, she must be safe. (laughs) And, and so we want to keep doing yeah. all those things that send the message of safety is going to help us grow our zone of resilience. I love all of this, Leah. I feel like this is so much good information that all of our listeners are going to love. And so we've talked a lot about how we can apply it for ourselves, but also how can we help, like, let's say one of our children is dysregulated or we're a teacher and we have some students who maybe always come dysregulated. Maybe they don't, aren't getting those basic needs met at home. What yeah. can we do to help them? Yeah. And I would even say it's not necessarily that they're they're not getting sometimes it is they're not getting their needs yeah. met at home. But sometimes, you know, we do have like we don't know what their experience was when they were newborns. Yeah. Sometimes True. it's just like the the birth order. Sometimes it's just that they are in a family where there's lots of competing demands. And and so they're not getting, not by any fault of the parent, they could have like a most loving, I grew up in an extremely loving family, but I had a sister who had special needs that required a lot of, um, a lot of attention from my parents. And so I learned how to adapt to that but that's not necessarily always so productive. So I just want to mention that because sometimes when we look at kids who are dysregulated, we may say something like, oh, what's wrong with them? Where it could be, no, they just have like a super loving family, but they're like one of seven kids. And for their nervous system, like their siblings may be fine, but for their nervous system, it, they just need a little bit more. So I just like putting things in that framework. For sure. Yeah. But even then, thinking of if you are a a teacher, one of the things that used to drive me crazy is it's a common consequence. And I don't know, my kids are older now and and we're in Canada, so maybe it's different. But sometimes the consequence was, well, you're not going out for recess or you're going to stay here until your work is done. Or would you stop moving around in the classroom and just sit still and get your work done? That can be really, really not just difficult for a kid that's dysregulated, but we're removing the way that they're coping with being probably on team hyper. So one of the, like the best things is if you see a kid who's dysregulated, make sure they're getting out and they're having their playtime. Have them be the one that is running to the office to drop something off to get that energy. Um, And I know that having a classroom, it's not always, you're not always able to let people get up and move around, but movement is so important for these kids. So that's the one piece. Another piece is just breathing, like teaching the kids in the class, Mm -hmm. simple breathing exercises. And we don't have to get all fancy. Like there's, there's simple ones. Like I, I have done where you just say, smell the flower, blow out the candle. That's it. You just have to smell it and you can say to them, like, pretend like you're your parents blowing out the candle. So there's like 40 candles. There's something like (laughs) that. And and so it helps them focus on the exhalation. And then as as a teacher, you can be doing that breathing too, where you start to notice whenever you notice any energy rising in your body. And it could be just like you feel like it's more anxiety or nervousness. It could be tension. It could be pain. Those are indicators. That's your body communicating to you saying you're dysregulated. You need to do something. So as a teacher, breathing, focusing on that inhalation and then exhalation. The one I recommend, it's called the physiological sigh. And that's where you do sort of two quick breaths in and then a longer exhalation. Exhalation is what calms it down, but the two quick breaths breaths in allow you to take in the air and then take in just a little bit extra and then push it out. And it's something that we very naturally do. If you think of like yourself, if you've been crying for a long time or you see a kid, it's like that. (laughs) That's what we're we're trying to mimic, right? We're trying to do natural. And so breathing, and then I talk about doing the rag doll, and that's what I had people do at the life coach school, is relaxing yourself. All those things are wonderful, though, but 
We want to always be including safety in everything we do. And one of the things, because the brain is constantly, you know, with that nervous system scanning safety danger, we want to let our brain and our body and our nervous system know that we are actually safe. We may not always feel safe, but generally, unless unfortunately, you know, and things going on in the world, there are areas of the world where people aren't physically safe, but the majority of us are safe. So asking ourselves a couple of questions. One, am I safe right now? And the answer, the majority of the time is going to be yes. And that just, first of all, sends sort of like that first line reassurance from the brain to the body, hey, you're safe. Then we're going to scan our body. And like I said, notice where that energy is. Do you have tension? Do you have pain? Do you have stress? Just notice it because that's your body saying to you, yeah, but I don't feel safe. So am I safe? Yes. But then when you scan, the body's like, but I don't feel safe. We're like, okay, it's okay. I know you don't feel safe, but what we're going to do is we're going to relax your body. And I say the rag doll where you just literally just let it, let it hang. One of my <laughs> clients, she, she was teaching it to her kids and her kids had said, oh, it's like Toy Story when all the kids oh, yeah. are, you know, they're, when all the toys are talking and having fun and then somebody's like, Andy's coming. And they all just drop to the floor like little, little <laughs> rag dolls. That's essentially what you want to be doing. So you want to have these three components. So if you're a teacher or if you're trying to teach students or if you're a parent and you're trying to teach your kids, we always want to establish safety. Like, hey, you're safe here. Because that kid who is buzzing all over, maybe he doesn't feel safe, but you can let him know or let her know you're safe here. I've got you. My classroom mm -hmm. is safe for you. And then yeah. you have all this energy. You feel that energy? Where do you feel it in your body? Do you feel it like, do you feel like you're going to explode? Does it feel like you have tension? All right, that's okay. That's just your body saying it doesn't feel safe. But what we're going to do is we're going to breathe or we're just going to relax our body. See how feel that feels really good? A relaxed <laughs> body cannot house stress. So if we want to eliminate stress, if we want to eliminate anxiety, we need to relax our body. It's virtually impossible. Like try yelling at your kids when you are completely relaxed in a ragdoll state. You're not going to be able to do it. The second yeah. you want to yell, you have to add energy to it. So that's why we walk people through these phases. And as a teacher, you can walk your class through these phases. Everybody's safe here. Everybody just notice where do you feel the tension? Now everybody, Andy's coming and just relax. And that gets you well on your way to getting regulated. I love that. Okay. We have gone through so much great information today. Um, so just to kind of sum it up. So we talked about like the nervous system what it is, how it applies to the model. Like, I don't know. We went through so much today. Is there anything you want to add? I'm like, how do I even go over all of it? Just listen to it again. That's it. Just re listen to it. I keep throwing different things in. I'm like, hmm, it was just really good. So, I mean, I mean I'll probably listen to it like five times. Like, Perfect. Perfect. I mean, the main thing is we want to, we, we have a innate need to feel safety, to yeah. be safe. And that's what our nervous system, it needs to know that we are safe. And if we aren't safe, then it's a good thing that we're activated because then we need to do something to get ourselves to safety. We, we don't yeah. ever want to try to convince somebody who's in, you know, um, an abusive situation or a war situation, oh, just relax and let it know. There's a reason why your nervous system is responding. Right are in danger. But the majority of time, our nervous system still reacts like it's in danger and we're not. Our nervous system doesn't know the difference between a real threat and a perceived threat. And mm -hmm. we need to just help to say, okay, this is not a real threat. You are totally safe. Yeah. And when you can relax your body, your CEO can come in, your CEO makes the assessment, mm, I check this out. You're totally safe here. Like stamp of approval, let's keep going. So we need to continue on to do that. We need to be inviting as much safety into our lives 
and as much safety into our kids' lives as possible. They need to know that they're safe and we need to provide them those moments and opportunities where they can identify safety in their life. Love it. Thank you, Leah. You did a much better job at like, <laughs> I mean, I guess you're the one who like shared all of it. So I'm like, wait, what did uh, I just hear? Like everything. Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> Your nervous system was having this reaction yeah. of information like, overload and that's what happens, right? <laughs> then you're thinking it's harder to think. Yeah. Yeah. So good, Leah. Okay. So um, if our listeners want to hear more from you, if they're like, oh, wow, this is like really good. I want to learn more. Where can they find you? Like your podcast, your training, yeah. coaching, any yeah. anything? I have a podcast and it's called Building Resilience. And so that is where you'll hear a lot of these things. My website is leahdavidsonlifecoaching.com and I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Leah Davidson uh, Life Coaching. I also, I have um, a free video series. It's called 30 oh, Seconds um, A Solution to Burnout. And even though I talk about it, burnout, essentially what I do is I explain the nervous system and I go through those three steps of, am I safe? Do I feel safe? Relax the body? Because that's essentially one of the most important things that we can do for our nervous system. So you can get that video series. And um, yeah, I have my training, advanced training in nervous system resilience, which I love doing that. Our next cohort comes out in January and that's it. So fun. Thank you, Leah. Thank you so much for your time. And um, yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk soon, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening to Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast. If you enjoyed our time together, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And if you're ready to take the next step, I'd love for you to join me face-to-face -face at my next free virtual mindset masterclass. In this masterclass, I'll share my full story of how I transformed my teacher overwhelm and anxiety into balance, authenticity, and a true understanding of myself. And the best news, it'll work for you too. I'll break down my five-step framework, share inspiring stories that will help shift your mindset, and you'll even get to see life coaching in action. You'll get a free resource and a special opportunity just for joining us, and you won't be able to get this anywhere else. Did I mention this masterclass is free? You've got nothing to lose. All you need to do is sign up, add it to your calendar, and commit to showing up live. Go to wifeteachmommy.com slash masterclass to sign up or head to the link in the show notes. I will see you at the masterclass.